Welcome back to the MBH Podcast, Money Buys Happiness. Guys, season five? Yep. Yo, did we actually make it this far? I don't know how. <laughs> Dean? We're definitely on motherfucking season five. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, listen, everybody that continues to show us love, continues to watch the podcast, we love you guys. We really do. Uh, if you haven't already, like, subscribe, do the whole fucking thing. I'm not going to get into, you know, too deep into it. bangers coming out. Some big bangers. But before we get into that, let's get into the moment now. We're here with a fucking Toronto legend, <laughs> Alex Bono, TFC. What's up, bro? Keep How up. are you, man? What's going on, guys? How are you, bro? My guy. I am really happy to be here. Yeah, Funny. no, we're, I've listened to a bunch of the podcasts. Yes. My brother, shout out Christian. He oh, is yes. a massive fan. Big fan. And he's always like, did you listen to the podcast? I'm like, I didn't get to it yet, bro. Just like, let me get there. <laughs> yeah, give me a second. Yo, big shout out your brother, though, yeah, too. He's he's a beauty, he always a shows us love, man. Yeah, 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 and yeah, yeah. I told him one day we're going to have him on the show, and, and he's going to explain how he supported us over the years. But, yo, he's a G. Shout out him. <laughs> um, we've, been, we've been trying to get you. Like we, We've been talking about get, getting you on just because you're not from Toronto. But now you're, you're, you're in it. You know what I mean? You're here, bro. <laughs> I'm an expat. Exactly. Yeah. I'm an exactly. expat. Right? So I definitely want to go into like um, a little bit of your background um, and how you started playing footy um, and, and where that led you and how you got here. Yeah. So when I was younger, I played a lot of different sports, uh, basketball, baseball, soccer, obviously. Um, and it kind of came down to like six foot two power forward, you know, like <laughs> yeah. you're not going to go anywhere in basketball. Yeah. yeah. And then you've got baseball. I missed a practice one time in ninth grade. And I kicked off the team, <laughs> and then it's like, <laughs> okay, yeah. well, what's left? Soccer, okay. Yeah. And it just happened to be the one that that people were telling me, and and I believed that I could go the furthest in. Yeah. So obviously, in the states, it's different. Like in Europe and here, it's a bit more streamlined, where you can go straight from uh, your academy, your youth teams, up into the professional environment. Yeah. In the states, like, how can I get my school paid for? Yeah. By playing soccer, so. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's where it was. And that's all I really expected to be was, can I get an education paid for? How can I set myself up for post, you know, post education yeah, careers? Yeah, yeah. Um, and I ended up staying in Syracuse. I went to Syracuse university. They were, uh, one of the only teams that showed me interest. Yeah. One of the only teams that showed me love in terms of even a partial scholarship offer. And really? it was home for me. And I ended up majoring in broadcast journalism. Yeah. Cool. Um, I did two and a half years there yeah. and then I came here. Damn, bro. But you were born, you were born in New York, right? Born in Syracuse. Okay. Raised oh, so in Syracuse. Like hometown, like hometown, it was just like all the way. And I never wanted to I never wanted to stay there. Like you always yeah. want to get out and experience something. Of course. And then the mix of footy school, I just ended up staying. There yeah. was nothing the really. Came, it was a yeah. And even when you were I think when you were at Q's, that was in a time where they were transitioning, right? Yeah. It was we, a big transition. We were the new coach had come in uh, the year before I got there, two years before I got there, and they were not very good. Yeah. Um, and the freshman class before I got there, I had a bunch of guys from Toronto. Yeah. Uh, Skylar Thomas, Thomas, Jordan yeah. Morrell, yeah. like these guys that were- um, Hollis too, Alex Yeah, Hollis, Alex yeah. Hollis was the year after me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like good players. A lot of Toronto, yeah, a lot yeah. of Toronto guys. And they, yeah, yeah. they still do a ton of scouting here in Toronto. So there's a ton of talent in this area, especially. Yeah. Um, but yeah, along with that group uh, and the classes my year and following, we really turned it around there. And, yeah. Um, I mean, there was like, eight years in a row where they had a first round draft pick or something crazy, like that crazy. seven years Holy in a row shit. like yeah. crazy okay, okay. Yeah. so it's like you're turning out talent you're in the ncaa tournament every year like big time ncaa school now jeez and then you get you get drafted to toronto yeah got yeah. drafted to toronto i ended up leaving got an offer to leave school uh early so i ended up doing two and a half years and so i still had a season left of eligibility and i got an offer uh generation adidas mm-hmm which they do every year for a select few guys. They do it for Canadians now. They, they used to have like a Canadian GA program as yeah. well. And then you basically just, you have a guaranteed contract. You go to the draft and whichever team takes you, that's who picks up your deal. Yeah, cool. Yeah, so I ended up, uh, I actually missed the in-person draft. I was with the national team. We had a mixture of like a U23 and first team camp right after they finished the World Cup the summer before, nice. yeah. which is incredible. And I found out, during a training session that I would be going so to sick. Toronto. That's wow. It was crazy. It, it was okay. a whirlwind, but, but oh, here shit. I am seven did, years did you, later. Did you know about Toronto like before? <laughs> Not no. like, to the extent. <laughs> be, I honest, been, be honest. Okay. Honestly, I came when I was a kid <laughs> yeah. uh, and we went to like hockey hall of fame and yeah, all that stuff yeah, like the, the bullshit, that the yeah, tourists yeah. do, you yeah, know? Yeah. yeah. And it's weird because Syracuse is like halfway in between here and New York city yes. drive. If you were to drive, it's four hours each way. Yeah. 
And so we would always go to the city. And I always wanted to go to play in New York and live in New York. I was like, wow, big city life, yeah, yeah. like coming from the burbs, you know? And um, I ended up in Toronto. My first thought was like, man, they do kilometers up there. <laughs> I got a different type of currency. Like, what the <laughs> fuck am I going to do in Canada, Canada yeah, you know? Because yeah, yeah. no one knows. And yeah. then you get to Toronto and you're like, holy shit. Yeah. Like, yeah. This place is the real fucking deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's big time. Yeah, yeah it's big. It's a big time city. And yeah. like anyone who comes here, like uh, vacations, anyone who plays here is like, holy shit. Yeah. Like they don't know the extent You're of how big the city is. You're not You've expecting it. You've been here for it. what five years now? Seven, bro. Ooh. Just finished seven. Oh, Jeez, you're okay. You're legit. You're in it, yeah, yeah, you're in yeah. Here, like bro. I'm. The only thing left is I gotta. I haven't applied for my permanent residency yet. Mm -hmm. I'm holding out on that. Wow. Well, they'll, they'll, they'll give you that. They'll give you that. I'll be all right. I'll be I want right. to track back to your NCAA days. Yep. Because I know you 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 started off and you were starting right off the bat as a freshman, which is fucked. Yeah. Which is crazy. Like that's uh, quite an accomplishment. So I want to know at that point like what was going through your head like going into ncaa starting like in these games like it's intimidating right yeah definitely i remember my first one we played u albany yeah um, and they were they were good right they were decent like yeah. the thing with you know obviously it's just football like anyone can yeah. beat anyone on any given day so um but yeah first game like your family's there because i'm local and yeah. it's like all the nerves yeah yeah and it's like it's the next step up it's your first one it's like your first high school game after you've been yeah you know your first professional game after you've been in college. It's yeah. like, it's always like that first one. It's like, you just gotta get out of the way. Yeah. Um, but no, one of the reasons I, I picked Syracuse is because it gave me the best opportunity to play for, for four years. Yeah. Um, and that's what I wanted. I didn't want to go somewhere where they, you know how politics are in the NCAA. Like, yeah, oh, we've got our guy for the next two years. Yeah. We think he's a good prospect. Like, we're obviously gonna play him. It's like, but you'll play as a junior and a senior. It's like, wait a second. Yeah, you gotta wait two years to no start chance. playing. Yeah, I gotta go right? train. Yeah. No yeah. chance, why, yeah. why would I do that? Um, well, and so, so they promised you they're like hey you come nothing's promised okay, but it's yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah nothing's promised but, you but felt it's confident. like i felt confident that i could go in there and it was an open competition i could win yeah. a job yeah. fair fair and yeah, yeah. and that was the most open and the perfect match of school family football yeah, yeah. yeah. it was all kind of a part of it the opportunity and, and, I ended up perfect. There and it was yeah, perfect yeah. ended up being perfect was there a match that happened in queues where you were like yo this is the one that that put me over the top. This is the one that kind of got me. Like, looks did, good. did it get hype? Like, was there certain things happening during your career there where you're like, okay, people coming to, like, scouts coming to check you out, like, whatever? Like, so when we, uh, towards the end of our first year, we were we were a good team. Made the NCAA tournament for the first time in, since like the 80s or something. Yeah. And, and you guys were getting ranked too. I remember yeah. that, yeah. And so we started getting, you know, Toronto Sea Scouts in New York, the local revolution. Those yeah. scouts would come and watch the big universities. Yeah. They have a guy that's on the staff there that comes and watches the big university games and whatever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just so they can see some prospects before they go to the draft and all that stuff. Um, but you don't really see them. Like It's not like they're out there with all their TFC <laughs> yeah, gear all the time. Okay. Yeah, yeah. They're kind of just low key in the group mm -hmm. of, you know, in the fan section. Yeah. And you don't know it. My dad, you know, <laughs> he's always like, he would stay, he couldn't sit. He's yeah. always so nervous. He would stand at the end where I was first half. He'd walk over to the end that I was second half. That's and he amazing. Would, you know, you, you've met him before. We've been out a couple of times with him. Yeah. And he would just sit there and start talking to people. And after the game, be like, well, there's a scout from, uh, you know, New York Red Bulls there today or a scout from New England Revolution. I was like, how do you know this shit? <laughs> he's chatting. He's, he's chatting. like, he's just talking. Chatting you know, he's nervous chatting, yeah. you know, yeah. during the game. Yeah. Um, not a specific game that I'd say would put me over the edge, but um, at, the end of the, uh, at the end of my freshman year, when it kind of was like, oh, Syracuse is like, the team in the Northeast, you know, yeah. um, you started hearing things and there were, uh, some agents that would show up because we had a lot, we had a lot of pro prospects, yeah. uh, in that, you know, in that class of four years. Yeah. So we would, we would hear all these things and guys had known agents that were from here and from other places just based on their youth careers and stuff like okay. that. Um, and you'd hear things, but you'd never really, you yeah. wouldn't really formulate and you can't really talk to agents. That's true. And so my junior year, it really started to pick up steam. We were really good. We were number one team in the country for a while. Yep. Um, oh shit! And I yeah, started to hear a lot more things. Wow. Okay. And the way they kind of go around it is the coaches hear things and they and they Tell a good you coach will yeah. will inform their players of, of what's going on. So um, it was important for me and for my coach, like, hey, listen, I'm going to tell you these things are happening because the buzz is starting to pick up. Yeah. But I need you here. Yeah. I need you to be present and, and focused until. Yeah, no These distractions. Are concrete to, yeah, yeah, exactly. Because as fast as the talk starts, that's as fast as it goes away. Yeah, true. And yeah. so, good coach. The though. toughest part, yeah, of course. Yeah, and that's why they've been such a good team for a while. They do yeah. great recruiting, 
and he's molding young men the right way. Yeah. And and that's what really being a college coach for me is about. You mm-hmm. gotta you wanna win, of course, but you need to mold people at a really of course. difficult age. It's 18, a, it's 17 a very delicate, to 22. Yeah. It's delicate and you want to you wanna raise people the right way. Yeah. You wanna raise them on the right values, whether that be in sports or, or off the field. And a good coach will put all that into perspective for you. Yeah. So I'm really grateful for that staff because they they really did that with with the whole group of us. And you could tell though, just with that team, like the come up of that team. I yeah. was watching it too, right? Yeah. Um, so you actually left early. Yes. So I know a lot of guys that come to that point in their in their time, and they're like, "Yo, I can leave early or I can finish." So yeah. how did how did you make that decision? I remember so vividly. Um, I decided that I was going to listen to offers which is obviously nothing concrete. There's no agent that you're signing with or anything. So you still have your eligibility. Yeah. And I would always say uh, to my Syracuse coach, my parents like, oh man, like knowing that MLS salaries aren't crazy. It's not life changing yeah. money, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Um, man, like if I don't get a hundred grand, like I'm not going, yeah. I'm not going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I remember being so stuck on that. And I walked into my coach's office and we had a meeting one day and, and I told him that and he's like, don't say that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He said, don't say that. Like, I'm your coach. I want you to be here for four years because I think you give us the best chance to be a really good team. Yeah. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's not about your first contract. It's not about the money. It's about how can I take this opportunity, roll with it, and when am I ready to start there? When am I ready at my base point to start in a professional environment? The one, the, the contract you want is the second one. Yeah, yeah. And once you sign the, the second one, one yeah. the contract you want is the third one. Like yeah. it's it's a never ending chase until the end of your career, whenever that is. Yeah. yeah. So um, I remember being so hard headed about, well, like I don't want to give up my degree and this yeah. and that, and I still don't, and I still I'm still working on it today. Um, oh, sick. Okay. But it's an opportunity, yeah. and as long as you feel ready, and as long as people around you, you know, the people who know the game, yeah, they're telling you that you're ready, yeah, and all this stuff, then it's really, really tough to pass up. Yeah, No dollar sure. amount, high or low, can tell you when you're ready. And 100%. so for me, it was looking inside, talking to people close to me, uh, hearing things from uh, the league and, and teams in the league that were saying, we want access to this kid as soon as we can. Yeah. And that's like, okay, uh, the more confidence you have and the more loved you feel yeah. from yeah. the next level, it makes it easier and, and it builds your confidence to say, okay, maybe I'm ready for this. Yeah. So, so how old are you when you, when you officially decide to leave? I was 20. I just turned 20 in the April and then that season. And then, yeah, I was 20 when I got drafted in January. Yeah. Okay. So, so then, you're 20 years old, right? Yeah. And no, you're at that sure. delicate age and, mm-hmm. and you're in college and college is great. You yeah. Know, college it's is fun. a fun time. It's fun. Yeah. Uh, and you can't play forever, right? Yeah, the fact of the matter is you can't play forever. And so you need a plan after. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you get to go live out a dream too. Yeah, and that's like, true. For who sure. Who doesn't want Guaranteed. to live out a yeah. dream? So even if it doesn't work out, you know, you have your agreements with your coaches like, hey, when I come back, yeah. there's all my money still on the table. You know, yeah. like, are you yeah. still going to help me get through this school? Yeah. yeah. But at the time, it's like, holy shit. Like I've been literally dreaming about of course, man. moments yeah. like this, this since is you're it. a kid. Yeah. 100%. It's good you had that support too, man. Yeah, of course. A lot so, of people have bad intentions and they, and they tell you to do the wrong thing or they coaches, do it for their own coaches benefit. coaches out there yeah, right. and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, you got to watch right. out. Um. Okay, so you were probably fucking hella confident coming out of the NCAA, yeah? Um, kind of. I, like good I felt, enough. <laughs> I felt good. I felt good coming out, and I felt like I belonged okay. uh, at the next level. So mm-hmm. when, to that level. When you came to the MLS, did you feel that the confidence took a hit at all? Oh, you get knocked down a yeah, few yeah. pegs. Right? So I want to know about that experience because I think that's that's huge. Okay, so it's kind of weird because, like I said, I, I was at national team camp. Yeah. And then you're on a, you're on a real high. Oh, you know, really whether nice. it's a mix of young guys and, and, you know, full team guys or whatever, yeah. you're on a real high. You're wearing the crest and you're like, holy shit. Yeah. Like, this is this is some next level shit. Yeah. And <laughs> that's crazy. That's it's, crazy. it's wild. I, I was imagining that's like, fucking unreal. I'm sitting there, I'm sitting there in the locker room. And I remember because this is the year that Josie came to TFC, Giovinco came to TFC. Everybody. And so Josie was at Sunderland, and he came halfway through the camp in January because okay. he had just made the move. And he's like, uh, I remember I stood up from my locker. He said hi to everyone. I shook his hand. I was like, hey, I'm, you know, I'm Alex. He's like, I'm Josie. Nice to meet you. I said, good to meet you. He's like, where do you play? I'm like, well, I just got drafted to Toronto FC. And he's like, no way, me too. Like, I just yeah. made a move there. I was like, uh, 
no shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. am I living know? under a rock? Yeah. Like, everyone fucking knows that. Yeah. yeah. And uh, he's like, been to the city yet? Checked out the stuff. And he's naming all these people like high ups. And uh, obviously, he came, of checked course. the city out yeah, and everything. Yeah. I'm like, bro, I don't know anyone. <laughs> 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 I'm just like, get out of college, bro. Yeah. You're a superstar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it's crazy. Like, I'm 20 years old, so out of place. Like, what am I doing here? You know? Yeah. And then yeah. these guys, like Michael, Josie, all these guys that were at the World Cup the summer before are crazy, like, crazy, crazy. You're sitting next to them in the locker room. You're like, holy shit. But that's when you also have to change your mentality yep. to, I belong here and I have to act like I do too. Yeah. yeah. Right. When I'm on the field, when I'm in the locker room, you can't be some kid and yeah. headlights and all these stars. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You got to yeah. act like, like you're going to be playing at the same level of as course. these guys. Of like course. you're going to be saving these guys shots on the same team. You know, some of these guys are going to score on you in your career. And yeah. that's just like, once you kind of get that mindset, that transition becomes a little easier. Yeah. But I remember my first day after that camp, I came to the preseason late and uh, when I was in college, I'm like shorts, t-shirt. You know, like yeah, out yeah. to training <laughs> Go flip flops with my gloves on. You yeah. know, it's like I show up for training, or we're in, we're on a turf field, and I show up with shorts and a t like team shorts and team t-shirt on. That's in my locker. Yeah, and all the goalkeepers look at me and they're like, "Who the fuck is it?" Like they're wearing sweatpants and <laughs> yeah, tights, yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah. to protect the their bodies, and long shit. sleeve yeah, shirts. Yeah. And they're like, "Who the fuck is this kid?" Like coming out <laughs> in his shorts and a t-shirt. Yeah. And I remember my goalkeeper coach John Conway, who's still my goalkeeper coach. He's like what are you doing, dude? <laughs> and I'm like, I, I don't know. Like, this is how I train. <laughs> yeah. and he said, listen, yeah. if you show up again to preseason in this stuff, we're going to have to have a long chat. Wow. He's like, you need to like protect your body. And it's like, you're on turf. You're going to be, you know, scraped yeah. up and all this shit. Well, uh, I guess you weren't used to turf at that point, right? Like never. Yeah. True. You know? And I was a young kid, you know, your body bounces back and all this yeah. stuff. You're not used to the scrapes and the bruises yeah. Yeah, and all yeah, that yeah. shit. And I, since that day, I have never come out <laughs> ever <laughs> it's a little harder. with less than tights and long sleeve underneath yeah. your shorts and t-shirt. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's kind of like, it's a learning of course, process. Yeah, it's yeah, a learning of course, curve. Of course. But yeah, you get knocked down a few pegs. When you step up the ladder, you get knocked down. When what? you, when you, Go sorry, so, so you show up to TFC. Do you play first season? Do you get a chance for a season? I got moved down to the second team my first season. So okay. that's, you know, talking that's, about that's you know, yeah. getting down some, some yeah. levels on the, on the ladder. Um, I spent my whole first season down with TFC2, and that was the first year of TFC2. And it USL, was, right? yeah. yeah. Brutal. It was brutal. I mean, yeah, yeah. one, we were no good. Yeah, you guys were coaching you that. Huh? Dick was coaching that? No. Okay. Jason Bent. Yeah, I remember Jason Bent. Um, he was coaching, and I mean, he's a, I thought he was an awesome yeah, coach. Yeah. But it's the first, first year of the team. Yeah, Inception. We yeah. are not good. Yeah. yeah. And on top of that, uh, the way we travel, the way we eat on the road is less than, is worse than even in college, you know? Wow. Because really? they're throwing this team together and there's no, they just have no time to plan. Yeah, no now, it's, now it's good, you know? Yeah. TFC2 now, it's like they travel properly, uh, they eat properly, they stay in proper hotels. But the first year you're like, I left school. For this? <laughs> so, <laughs> for this? Yeah, for yeah, this? Yeah. Yeah, crazy. And it really, it makes you question some things. Um, and I went through, you know, you go through some low times. I went through some low times How in the first year. How did you get year. out of that, bro? Honestly, the big call up by, by working, but just working, working yeah. your ass off, just yeah, working, yeah. like yeah. come in, uh, try and be the earliest guy there and the last guy to leave. Yeah. Um, true. I was never like a gym rat when I was in college. I hated being in the gym, hated lifting, hated doing fitness. Yeah. Now it's so like just naturally fucking jacked. Or not what? even bro. I was a scrawny kid. <laughs> I, my first year I shed like 15 pounds. Damn. Wow. Because you're in college. bro. Yeah. yeah, yeah. True. Yeah. You Everything. know, you're eating pizza and mac and cheese and yeah. <laughs> drinking true, beer true, and you're yeah. like wait a second and yeah. you have to have that lifestyle switch like okay i need to yeah. take care of myself yeah or else i'm gonna be back there faster than i want to be <laughs> yeah. you know yeah true true so i shed like 15 pounds and i like running lifting and that's when i became a gym rat right yeah. and just like working out all the time clean up the diet obviously yeah. all that shit so um that's what i used to kind of dig myself out of stuff yeah and that's what really kind of changed my my mindset heading yeah. into my second year fuck so you just took that as kind of like an opportunity to just be like yo i gotta better myself right yeah. now yeah and you see people around you it's not like everyone else of around you is just chilling no yeah. no yeah. everyone's around sure. you's working and you come from a place where okay in the off season and spring season and stuff yeah. like that you're working out but during season you're not really doing that kind of stuff yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. and so you get here and you're like oh wow okay yeah. So I got to lift every day. Yeah. <laughs> All right. yeah, That's right. crazy. Cause I was figure in college, you were doing that straight up. I'd figure in college, you were in the gym. It wasn't like a, I mean, you're playing every three, yeah. four days mm. and in the spring season, it's like, okay, 6am workout, yeah. you're going to run, you're going to lift. It's yeah. Like, oh God. This is you're just eating and drinking <laughs> the rest yeah, of the time. Right. Yeah, yeah, right. Right. And then you show them to your workout at 6am yeah. on a Saturday. Like, Buckled. Yeah. 
<laughs> like, what am I doing right now? <laughs> so that, that first year happens, you're in USL. And then after that, I'm thinking that that's when it, that's when you get the call back. How, do you, how does that, how yeah, does that so work? I, so it's just a loan deal. So you yeah. go back up to the first team. Uh, and then towards the end of the season, I was in, uh, in trainings and stuff like that. Yeah. Second, my second year, uh, in the off season before my second year, they got rid of the two goalies that had played the year before. And it was myself and another young kid who was my age. That was a local Toronto kid that came up through the ranks. Yeah. And then they signed Clint Irwin. Yes. Yeah. He came in that year. He was supposed to be like the big guy. He was he was the one coming in. Like yeah. we got two young guys. We're gonna see who develops better out of the two but of them. You scooped that spot quick until that <laughs> until that comes. Yeah. yeah, we gotta we gotta sign a guy who we know can do it. Yeah. yeah. Um. So second year comes, about halfway through the season, uh, or away in Orlando, and he takes a goal kick and pulls his quad. Hurt, yeah, like, I hurt himself. Yeah, in half, Jeez. like bad. And so he's going to be out for an extended period of time. I'm down there running on the, on the end line, you know, warming up with the guys, like messing around, having a laugh and whatever. And all of a sudden we're watching this goal kick and he like kicks the ball. He jumps in the air and does like a pirouette and lands on the ground. And oh he's like God. grabbing his leg. Yeah. And like that kind of, that chill goes down your spine. And you're like, holy shit, it's, this yeah. is it. This is the one, like <laughs> a year and a half. Yeah. Like yeah. I'm about to go in this game. Oh my yeah. God. And as that's happening, my goalkeeper coach is running down the, the sideline <laughs> with my shin guards and my gloves. <laughs> Right? And a ball to warm me up. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, quick warm up, toss everything in. And it's good. For me, that's the best way to have your debut mm, because yeah. you don't have to no sleep nerves. the night thinking about, yes. oh my God, I'm going to start tomorrow. You're just kind of thrown into it. Yeah. And so it's like 90, it's like 35 degrees. I was talking in Fahrenheit. Yeah. <laughs> it's like 35 degrees. We're on turf in Orlando. It's humid as hell. Oh my God. And come into this game and we end up losing 3 2. Kaka hits a penalty in like the 90th plus and we Fucker. lose. And then Fucker. my second game is Canadian Championship final second leg in Vancouver. Oh and my they're like, God. hey, by the way, we're going straight to Vancouver. And yeah. like, you're going to play. I'm like, yeah. oh my God, <laughs> what is going <laughs> on right yeah. now? And so I ended up putting a few good games together. And I ended up playing the rest of that year until Clint got healthy. And then we had we were good enough to make the playoffs. Um, and he came back a few games before playoffs started. And the coaches decided, hey, you know, he's played in playoff games before, this and that. Experience or whatever. We're, yeah. we're going to roll with him for the rest of the year. Uh, we ended up making it to MLS Cup that year. Yep. I was on the bench. We lose in penalties to yep. Seattle. Remember that. I remember that one too. Um, and then next season starts the same way. Clint's still the number one. I'm the backup now, you know, solidified backup. And three games in, two games, Clint plays the first two games. I played away in Vancouver or something. Yeah. And then we had our home opener and he gets hurt again. Wow. He tweaks his hamstring. I remember that, yeah. I remember and that. same thing. You come in, <laughs> yep. cold, March, Toronto. Yep. And you're like, okay, here we go again. And from then on, I just I played the rest of the way out. Yeah. Well, so, you came in hot, though. Yeah. You came I mean, in hot. Was, you looked hungry to play. I remember that. I remember, I remember that offseason, man. man. I was in every single day yeah. doing the work. And I lost the preseason battle. And I was like, oh, man. I was so – I was really, really upset about it. And the staff is like, hey, listen – we like where you're at. It's just not quite there yet for, for the long term, for a mm -hmm. full season. This yeah. and that. I was like, all right, well, whatever. Keep working. So I keep working. Three games in, four games in, get an opportunity, coming off the bench, play, and then the rest of the year. You were there? Played it. Played almost every game. Yeah. And then 2017, that's the year. That's the year. Yeah. We win everything. Best team. Shield. Canadian Cup. Yeah. Playoffs. MLS Cup. Crazy and it was season, like the, crazy, the craziest shit. Fuck. How was the experience winning? Like nothing I've ever felt in for my real, entire man. life, man. Yeah. Is that like your sure, biggest bro. achievement as a football player? Oh, yeah, for yeah. sure. And you're at home. That was the yeah, best part, yeah. bro. Oh, my God. That man. was the best part. And the year before, it was freezing cold. Yep. It was like yep. negative 10. Yep. Mm -hmm. 2017, it was a beautiful night. Yep. Zero degrees. Yep. A couple flurries early night. in the day. Yeah, it was beautiful. Nice little breeze, but like solid playing weather, you know? Yeah. And we dominated again. Yeah. And we found our goals and we won. And that was like, I remember like screaming, but not actually making any noise. Like I was yeah. so pumped yeah. and you're yelling at the top of your lungs and nothing's coming out. Yeah. It's just like, you're so choked up and shit in the moment. Yeah. And you're like, Oh my God. Like what's the feeling when you're just, you're, oh you're standing God, there watching man. that pass Seva to fucking Josie. Just that was it. it. Like I unlocked I, you it. had that perfect like view. I started, I, I remember I started running forward and I was jumping, jumping in the air. <laughs> I see Josie on a breakaway. I start jumping, jumping, jumping. Yeah. And well, then he scored and like the roof blew oh, off of the, the place. The stadium yeah. was, like, the, I was there. The electric. atmosphere was fucking electric. crazy. And man. they brought the extra stands in. I think yeah. we had like 35, 30, 35, 40,000 yeah. people. Almost 40,000, yeah, yeah. And it was like, 
holy shit yeah like it was the loudest the loudest i've ever experienced 100 percent. oh my god damn what an experience you get the trophy man yeah you're up there on the platform with your teammates and everyone's still in the stadium like no one's left everyone wants to see the celebration and everything and it's just like you raise the trophy and the place is as loud as when josie scored i mean it's well you know what's cool like i feel like even for that team and then we were talking to like richie and also about it like that was like it, like arguably one of the best teams in mls history ever yeah like in, like yeah. you know what i mean so it's just like to be a part of that oh, dude like what, what an experience yeah never man. forget it and now you said seven years you've been here seven years man going into my eighth season so Holy. i got a question for you all right in terms of the seven years because i want to know when you first came what you thought of toronto compared to now what your thoughts on toronto are okay uh just all around yeah it's all around bro when I first came, I remember my first drive in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we they they put all the rookies up at Young and Shepherd, like near the facility. Yep. And I first came and I'm waiting to see all these big bright lights. And I'm like, oh yes, like this is gonna be so sick. The riding's gonna be so cool, the yeah. view and this and that. I'm gonna see the skyline, the tower. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't been there since I was a child. Like I don't remember that yeah. shit. Yeah. And of course I'm taking the four oh one to get to Young and Shepherd, right? Yeah. And I see, see nothing. nothing yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what the world? <laughs> all these buildings and lights. I don't see a thing. Like, you see the, the fuck? fucking the office where buildings yeah, right? like yeah. in Scarborough. Like, where am I staying right yeah. now? And uh, That's crazy. I, I ended up living in Liberty Village my first year with Jay. Of course. And then, you know, you meet people, guys like Ernesto, that you're like, <laughs> if I can get away from this guy as fast as fucking <laughs> yeah, possible. I need to get away, dude. <laughs> this guy's, I'm, I'm calling it a train. I'm this guy's dangerous. Get me <laughs> out of here. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. And, um, <laughs> no, but you start meeting people, and Jay was local. A bunch yeah. of guys on the team at the time, second team, were local. Local and guys, yeah, knew yeah. A lot of the guys that yeah. you know that grew up in the in the football culture and stuff. And um, I thought it was like the coolest thing when I was younger because again, I was, I'm rural, yeah. rural New York State. You come to a big city, and it's just the the best thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. everything's walkable. Yeah, everything's close. Dinner at your footsteps. Yeah. Anything you want, right there, right. And, and every village is cool. Every village like is cool. In, all yeah. the young people, yeah. right yeah. beside the, the field too, the right. stadium. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you're beside the stadium. In my first year, when I wasn't playing, you could walk. I would walk to the stadium yeah. with Jay or whoever. Yeah. And no one would recognize you because. Yeah. I was gonna say know, yeah. No one recognizes. No one knows. Yeah. yeah. No one knows. Um, and it was great. So when I first came, I was like, wow, this is like the coolest thing. Like, it's a really cool city. Now, honestly, <laughs> I mean, I've moved all over the downtown area. Yep. I'm on the west side, and I'm like this. It is the now I understand and I do believe it's the most diverse city. Yeah. Yes. In North America, mm-hmm. um, anything you want, you can find in terms of uh, neighborhoods, in terms of big city, in terms yeah. of the core. Yeah. It's not like New York, which is like one long big city yeah, of yeah. tall buildings. You can't get out of it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, like two blocks away from me now i walk down the street and you can't hear shit and you're like this is this is beautiful know, yeah. you know this is so nice it's awesome yeah. man and then you walk five minutes the other way and you're on queen street and you're like yeah. okay well i'm back in the city yeah. Yeah, yeah um so i think that it's different than any place i've been just in terms of that i mean it's but just I think an you also put city. you put yourself out there too to like meet new people yeah and for do sure things too like even the november the mustache cup yeah 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 shout out the mustache cup yeah, yeah. had you involved there too but Yo, you were you were you were trying to just get out there and meet new people too i mean we met maybe four or five years ago when yeah. I mean, you were with the local boys and shit, yeah, and then yeah. you just linked up. Yeah, and that's like, if you're not, when you move, to, anyone who moves to a new place, if you're yeah. not open, I tell my brother this all the time, like, yeah. moves to a new place, like, dude, go sit at a restaurant, like if they have a bar there, and just have dinner by yourself. Yeah, true. And like, true. you'll meet people, you'll talk yeah. to people, you'll make connections. Maybe it's the bartender, yeah. who's like a good dude, and the like, server, whatever, you, you, know, yeah. you yeah. become friends, whoever it is. Yeah. The guy that sits next to you, the girl that sits next to you, you yeah. sit down, you have a conversation, just be open to meeting new people and having new experiences. Yeah. Is it probably a good thing that you came like at a young age too. It's not like you're, you're coming to Toronto at to, you know thirty years old and right. like closer to the end of your career. Like right. you're, you're young, you're fresh, you're excited. Yeah, right. I, I was young, I was single, and I had a good group of guys on the team that were around the same age and, and interest. So yeah. that was fortunate for me too. I, I think it's it's always tough to go to a new place alone mm-hmm. when you have yeah. no friends and you have to rely on other people. Yeah, it makes it much tougher. But here, I, I was really lucky that here I had a group of people who had friends. Who had connections yeah. that I could just kind of meet myself and, and form my own relationships with? Of course. For sure. I, I, oh, oh, okay, oh, no, no, oh, hold on. I have a oh. question first. I have a question first. Because I have a question first. Because <laughs> okay, you were saying like we've been talking about seven years, Toronto, all that yeah, stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, have you? Have, has there ever been a moment where you were like thinking like, hey, maybe it would be good for me to play in another city? And like, it's not. It's not from, it's not from a disrespectful no. aspect to, to TFC in Toronto. Like, no. you you've done 
more than your part in the city and, and for the team. But I'm thinking more from a perspective of like just wanting something new to see to see a new city to you know what I mean grow somewhere else. That's a loaded question. Two different viewpoints on that. Yeah. One, no, because cool. I love this city mm -hmm. and the club that's done so much for me. I have tremendous loyalty to and, I, and I love it. Yeah. And for that reason, I, I would never want to leave. As long as TSU will have me, I would love to stay. Yeah. Cool. I respect that. We'd love to have you. You know bro. what? Yeah. You know <laughs> what? I respect I, I'll that. I'll be here. I respect that because loyalty in sports, I feel like, is gone. Is gone. So gone. to hear that, I, lo yeah. I love that. I love that. Two, when times are tough and so like after 2017, 2018, we had a really bad year. 2019, yeah. I didn't really play. 2020, barely. You know, like obviously COVID and shit. And yeah. on top of that, they had brought in a guy and, and the coach had liked him better. And so it's moments like those where you're like, Okay, I don't want to leave this place, but for the good of my career and the good of and the good of my development, mm -hmm. maybe I have to. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I have to. And it's like anyone who comes here would tell you, man, I love this place. For sure. You know, yeah, if yeah. you don't, it's because you didn't see enough of it or you didn't experience enough of it. You meet the right people. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so, from that perspective, I would always want to stay. Yeah. But from a career perspective, you have your ups and downs. Yeah. And there were times when I said, hey, listen, maybe I need to to go elsewhere to to develop and 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 blossom more. Yeah. I'm still here. Yeah, right on. Yeah. Things are looking up, and yeah. hey. Yeah, yeah, fuck it. No, we need you here, bro. Come <laughs> yeah. on, bro. I was going to say, like, okay, and then let's say outside of a football perspective, mm -hmm. um, Toronto, would you call it home? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I've only lived in upstate New York and Toronto my entire life. Yeah, true. And even now, like in the off season, I spend more time here than I do back there. One, yeah. because I'm training at the facility, keeping in touch with the staff, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Two, um, I, I mean, I have a, you know, renting a place here, obviously. Yeah. I love my apartment and, and all that comes with it and mm -hmm. being able to be in the city. Yeah. And three, this is just where I feel more comfortable. Yeah. Like right for on. myself, I love yeah, going yeah. home and visiting my family. Yeah. You know, I love going back to the it's house close too. And, yeah. yeah. It's close by yeah. and being in the suburbs and having it be quiet and all that stuff mm -hmm. and, and spending time with them. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I try and just go back and forth, but I would never go in an off season to just stay at home. You know, like yeah. I just feel to, like yeah. I need to be here. This is, this is home for me now. Yeah. Cool. Damn, Seven bro. years in man, <clears throat> you know, it's true, man. I like it that, felt bro. like it after three yeah. just yeah, because yeah. it's that kind of city. And when you have people that you're close with and, yeah. and make it feel that way, it, it makes it easy. Of course, man. No, I love that, bro. The loyalty thing is huge, bro. <laughs> I, I hate that. It's been, that's like a lost thing in sports nowadays. Like I hate that. So to hear that fucking right on, man. Did you feel <laughs> like, um, I asked Richie and also this too, um, that it was hard to kind of of stay away from distractions being in Toronto. Well, uh, as them, yeah. they're, they're local, right? Well, so again, for them, it was a bit as, harder. As long as, in as, long as I you, talk to her, as long as you stay away from me, <laughs> yeah, then you're good. <laughs> you're all right. uh, it can be, but right? I, I think that a big part of that is where do you want to be? Right? Yeah. Like, where do you personally, you know, where do you want to be? Yeah. And for me, I always wanted to be at the top level playing. And I never want to be at the top level on King Street or at the yeah. top level, yeah. you know, or whatever, <laughs> yeah. you know. You can get there if you want. You, <laughs> <laughs> you got people that I can talk to? I can, like, jump past all those entry <laughs> levels and just got to we'll go straight to the top. So. Um, but I always – it depends on, on who you are as a person. Some people yeah. – don't have that that gene that that drive that they want to be the best at what they do. Yeah, they want to enjoy themselves, and that's great. That, I don't have any problems with that. Yeah, as long as you take care of your business. Yeah, you know, true. And the second that your your casual life interferes with your business, that's when you know you're going too far, right? Yeah, yeah. that's what you're getting paid to do. That's what you're here for. Yeah, facts. And you'll go somewhere else where that won't be a distraction, and you'll have to focus on that. Yeah. Or the team will ship you off, and you'll have be a distraction somewhere else. And good you know? luck, yeah. And right. Good luck, yeah, yeah. Um. Uh, this city can be a massive distraction yeah. in any line of work, especially yeah. especially sports, and and you see it. I've seen a know, few guys, yeah, all the time, man. No yeah. names, and, but I've seen a few of guys, course, yeah, yeah, yeah. In one day, trouble out, out the, the next, other. right? Yeah. In, in all sports, uh, at all levels, and it's like it's such an easy city to to get in trouble in. Do you think if you <laughs> played pro closer to home that you would have been more distracted? No, huh? I think I would have been. I mean, I because think like you I, know people and shit around there. I yeah, guess, maybe, like, you know? maybe. Um, but I do think that again, it comes down to who you have around you and, and who you are yeah. to say, this is my priority. Yeah. yeah. And as soon as your priorities start to change and it affects your job, yeah. that's when you really, you start to get in trouble. So as long as you, as long as you have that perspective, it's true. you can go to, you know, you can play in uh, Mallorca yeah. or, yeah. you know, anywhere <laughs> yeah. and not get into that much trouble. True. Yeah. As long as you have the right ideals about, about what you're doing and where you're going. I, 
I actually want to kick this back for a second. It's just a question I have, and I'm curious. Like when when you were saying uh, how you got into football, it was like you were like, okay, basketball, okay, like baseball. Like I hear all these stories about these guys, and like whether it's the NBA, NHL, whatever mm -hmm. it is, MLS, like starting, like deciding like their final sport that they're gonna roll with at like mm -hmm. such a like. Like an, I want to say old age, but like yeah. you know, grade ten, grade yeah, eleven, you're, you're like, okay, cool, I'm gonna just now stick with with footy, where it's like I feel like here, the guy beside you was just like, bro, I played since I was two and a yeah, half, like for in, sure. And then you're just Toronto, pulling up, like, yo, we'll do like soccer. Guys like Rich, for example, mm -hmm. that guy's been playing soccer. He, was, he came out of the womb to soccer. Yep, you know yeah, what I mean? It. Like he was doing the beep test at the at like two years I, old. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you ever seen this kid? I swear he's doing the beep test yeah, every day. Yeah, percent. No, but I'm like a lot of Canadians. I even guys that I know personally. It's just like yeah, like it was one sport the whole time, mm -hmm. and like you just you like your parents show. It's like this, this guy is gonna be a hockey player. You <laughs> only play. Bonds hockey. is just like bro. Like I'm a fucking athlete. That's bro. what I'm trying to say. I think it's American thing. I don't know. Like what is it for me? It's it goes to show you that not everyone's blueprint is the same, yeah, right? True, like not, not everyone true. gets to the, to the same destination, the same, Fair. the same route, you yeah. know? And so for me, I mean, listen, if I was an outfield player, my focus would have had to, for me, would have had to have been on, on soccer a lot earlier because, yeah. uh, I'm not a extremely physically fit guy. I'm not fast. You know what I mean? And like, <laughs> yeah. so, yeah. but when you're a goalkeeper, right? Part of it is your footwork and your, your, the ball, your feet and yeah. that sort of thing. But a lot of it is transferable into other, yeah, into other sports like That's basketball. You go for a rebound, you can compare that to, to going up and getting across, yeah, right? Facts. And so these type of things for certain people, I think, is actually beneficial. True. Yeah. Where you know you can have your main sport or a couple main sports if they're beneficial to, to each, each other, they work together, right? If they're cooperative with each other, that I think could be really really progressive. Yeah. If I wanted to be a striker. And I was playing catcher in baseball. Yeah. You would say that's kind of <laughs> counterproductive, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm lucky that I played sports that were transferable: throwing, catching, jumping, yeah, running, True. right, all yeah. that stuff. And it transfers to being a goalkeeper, yeah. loosely, of course, yeah. loosely enough where it doesn't. It's not detrimental. Come to on, your, you can play striker, bro. No chance. No chance. <laughs> I'll throw you up. I think a, I think a, knock, a couple through balls. I, I take a nasty penalty kick and tell you what, I do have a solid finish on me. Yeah, yeah. But come on. Come on. Like at the end of training, sometimes you got to have fun. You go up there and you do some shooting on. drills. Come on. You do some finishing drills. Come on. You know, yeah, a little yeah, bit of credit. Yeah, yeah. Well, I got a question to. for you. Um, All right. Because <laughs> obviously, even, even um, talking directly about TFC, right? Like you've been on been through seasons where you've won, been the best. And then there's been seasons where it's like, fuck, like, you know, we could have done a lot better. But yeah. What keeps you motivated as a football player? What, what keeps you going even when you guys, let's say, aren't doing as well? You know, what makes you want to get there and, and you know what, put in, your, put in your hard work? For me, not, you know, very few professional athletes can say this. I've seen the, the bottom. Yeah. The very bottom. Yeah. I've seen the very, the very top. Yeah. Right? And so knowing both those things, you know what brings a team to the bottom. You know what can get it to the top. Mm. Right. And so when you're in a tough season – right this was the toughest yet yeah just because yeah. of all the flux that we had and we were living in florida for a while and all that different stuff now i really know what the the lowest of the low is you know True, and, it, yeah. and it felt that way for a lot of us this year and for me it's now having lived that the past year in my off season how can i get back to practices and and influence the guys around me yeah to better emulate how the good teams are yes yeah, like how, that winning how that winning right, season was the right. mentality yes yeah. and the you know the mentality every day in training the doing extra work and the hunger for guys that aren't on the field to be on the field like 2017 bro uh jay is a good example yep. jay was struggling again the 18 yeah yeah i remember that and jay is a he's a oh, good bro, fucking he's player. a baller good, he's a baller, he's a baller. Yeah, yeah. he yeah. played a lot with miami this year and he played and he played really well yeah jay was struggling to get in the 18 at times yeah and you look at it and every day in training he's bossing it yeah yeah it's crazy he's bossing it he's out he's out there you know playing really good football mm -hmm. and for me that's like as a group that's the difference right that just guy number show, one yeah. and guy number 28 are working equally as hard yeah, yeah they're balling right both and of them, competing yeah. with each other and this guy is pushing the guys in front of him right and he's yeah. and he's pushing into the 18 and guys are angry that they're out of the 18 and pushing back in there has to be a constant competition yeah. at, at every aspect true right that's true, true. Not not every player is going to be in and out of being a starter, of right? Course. But you can be in and out of being a bench guy. Yeah, yeah. You can be in and out of being on the travel roster, yep. mm -hmm. right? And if that competition exists and guys are hungry for it all the way to the bottom, 
it pushes every, the next yeah, guy in front yeah, of you, yeah. right? It keeps the momentum going. Whereas when you're in a losing season, some guys are like, oh, fuck this. Yeah. I'm over Season's this. already over. Or, I'm not going to play. Even the guy that's not dressed, he doesn't want to play. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to play anyway. So you show up the training. And what good is it when you're starting 11 is going against people who don't the care. next 11 guys who don't give a shit. Yeah, yeah so, true. So I guess just taking those characteristics from that team or like the winning years and, yeah. and just saying, okay, like these are things we have to emulate. And no matter what, if you're the first, first place team or the last place team, yeah. the base level every time you show up has to be you're ready to work. Yeah. And you're, you're, you're ready to get your hands dirty, right? Because my dad always told me this. So you, you never get better. You never get, you never stay the same. You either get better or you get worse. True. Uh, if you have a lateral year, it means you're down. Yeah. Right? Because every single time you do anything, every single time you guys come into the office, I show up to the facility, you have an opportunity to get better. You have an opportunity to improve yourself, improve the guy next to you. And if you're not doing that, you're not only doing yourself a disservice, you're doing the guy next to you yep. a disservice. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, I've always lived by that. You, you can't, you're either getting better or worse and it's gonna flux, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's always gonna be different. Can't yeah. always get better. Of course. And now, now how does it feel being, a, I would say essentially a vet yeah. with a lot of young guys breaking into the lineup? It's exciting. Um, we have a really good group of young guys. Yeah, there are and, some ballers there, man. Right, and, and a lot of them, I don't wanna say look up to guys that are in my kind of situation but they do lean on you a little bit for sure yeah, to kind of, of bring you along everything of course. And as long as you have guys that are open uh good characters yeah. you know like nice guys willing to learn yeah then it's it's fun right and of course i'm not old by any means 27 yeah, yeah. but they have a way of keeping you young at the same time yeah, right true. you have a way Keep of bringing them up and they have a way of keeping you young at, at the same time which is really exciting and, and i've experienced a lot of that this year as yeah. I've matured myself and, yeah. and kind of, uh, you know, refocus myself, these guys coming in and they're having fun times. And at the same time you say, okay, that's great. But also can you, right. Yeah. Can you keep up the pace? Yeah, of course. Can you stick with the rest of the group and start pushing people? So, yeah, yeah. uh, it's exciting to kind of mentor those kids in a way. Yeah. And it's also fun to be in the locker room and, you know, just kind of some young time. energy. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So like, I wanted to ask you even about, I know you and, J and chaps were fucking yeah. close as hell, right? Like how was that relationship? And, and two peas in a pod, two peas in a pod. <laughs> how did, pod. did that hurt when he had to leave? Oh yeah. Like nothing else. Fuck. I mean, we, we lived together for two years yep. and then we moved to one bedroom apartments in the same building. <laughs> okay. So basically living and together. And then I moved the block down the street <laughs> yeah. and it was like the furthest separation we had. We, didn't, <laughs> yeah. we weren't even driving with each other training anymore. It's yeah, like, yeah. okay, wait a second. This is weird. <laughs> um, but yeah, man, he like in my professional career, he's my best friend yeah. and, and I still talk to him all the time. That's awesome. Man. And he's a great kid. And uh, just to have someone like that when I came was so I was special say, to me. For you know? when yeah. you came, that was probably so key. That was man. it. You know, and we ended up living together and it was great. Yeah. Um, and he's a guy that like, He's a G, bro. There's not many people that you, that you know you'll talk to for the rest of your life. Yeah. You know? like, yeah. yeah. I got a few kids from high school. Yeah. And I got a couple of kids from college. And yeah. I got a few people in my professional career that I'm like, yeah. you know what? No matter what happens, when I'm 80 and this guy's 80, we're, yeah. we're, we're, we're going to be talking. Yeah. So, yeah. And like he's that. definitely one of those guys. So, you sure, you sure shout out make Jay, memories, bro. man. Yeah. Shout out Jay. Jay, come on the guy. pod, man. Come on the fucking pod. He said he's coming back here soon. Yeah. yeah. Huh. Soon. I think he's in New York with his girlfriend right now. I've seen that. I've seen that. Living the dream. I have to ask you a question. And, and you confirm it with me, but I'm, I'm almost 90% sure. The, uh, that Ebra goal, that was on you? Yeah. <laughs> I had yeah. to make him sad. No, man. I was there at that no, game. No, no, honestly. Like, and that was like one of the best goals I think I've ever seen. I'm, me, I'd, I'm be like, huge, I'd, I'd be happy. I'm a huge Ebra fan. So like, that was a fuck bro. This like, you're, you're that no, 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 I'm no. sorry, bro, I'm sorry. <laughs> but that goal is unreal. Well, and, and, and listen, nothing you could do, to no, be no, honest. This is, uh, was there I something said, you could have done? I said like, yeah. But in reality, like when people ask me about it, I'm like, yeah, it was actually pretty cool. Yeah. No, no, I because have to, we I have to. One, we kicked the shit out of him. Yeah, we you guys still won. Yeah, 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 still yeah. won. Yeah, and it was his 500th career goal. Yes, wow. and you're like, and it was a fucking. Okay, so goal. wait a second. <laughs> Every year, when Ibra scores his 500th career goal, yeah. 442 or BR yeah, football is going to yeah. post about Ibra scoring <laughs> his 500th go. goal. You're gonna be yeah. I'm going to be in there, right? Like, I'll be, I'll, I'll be in the highlight yeah. reel forever for yeah. something. Yeah. You know, come on, come on. Either way, you're in the record books for something. I'll take being in the record books getting scored on than not being him at all, right? 100%. Yeah. No, no. Well, I think, I, I think it was, the tough part about I, I being think a goalie. I think it was, um, who, was it Petrasso that got the slap? He got the Ibra slap. Oh, yeah. When he when he stepped on him by accident and then yeah. Ibra just turned around and slapped him. Remember that game? Yeah. No, that game? he did that? Yeah, yeah. Remember, oh, my when God. Was, when Petrasso was in Montreal. He was on Montreal, yeah. yeah. And he was, like, running back. He stepped on Ibra and Ibra just smacked him in the head. Smacked like, him in the face. Like his dad. But, like but his yeah. dad. Ibra showed up to the MLS like it was just like he was there for fun. Yeah, I mean, he was. Yeah, yeah, he was. He oh, was. He was on vacation. He, he go yeah. to LA, big brand. Yeah, true. And of course, like, 
LA is the biggest, you know, essentially top three biggest yeah. market. Yeah. 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 From right? us. Yeah. In, in North American sports. Yeah. Facts. For, yeah. Every for everything. Sport. Of course. Yeah. For every right. sport. Yeah. Yeah. And so he's obviously a big personality. LA is pretty diverse. You have a lot of Hispanic population yeah. and otherwise that are big into football. And he comes in and they only pay him whatever. And of course, you know, this guy's got sponsorships coming out <laughs> of, of his course. ass yeah. and for houses anything, and whatever. Yeah. And he's fine. But like for LA Galaxy, that's like, that's so worth it. 100%. No, but he, he was saying some disrespectful shit. Of no, course. Dude, in the media, like, he's like, bro, he's and, he, he left and he was just disrespecting yeah, the whole yeah, league. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, bro, like players, put teams I don't and care shit. if you were trying or not. You weren't even like, that yeah. great when you when yeah, you were right, here, yeah. right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. What, what he scored that goal from half or some shit. I'm like, yeah. oh, now we're never going to hear that. Never going to hear the end of it. Game. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, listen, they, like you said, they did it for the. They just did it for the market. For the, it was like a fucking show. One thing though that you do see, like, and Eber's an example, but guys like uh, when Pirlo is here, and, yep. Rooney, uh, Rooney, and uh, David, David Villa, Villa. Yep. Gerard. Gerard, Gerard. When these guys come, maybe they're not at their apex, right? Yeah. But like the one thing you know is that these guys are still classy as fuck. They can like, still ball. Yeah. Oh my god, man! Yeah. Like some of the things that these guys pull off is pretty unbelievable. And Damn. like I don't care if they're moving at half speed. Yeah, you know, just to be on the field with them is so cool. 100%. And to see some of the stuff they do is like, hundred percent, bro. You don't see that. Yeah, I'd you be don't shook. I'd be shook, bro. You don't see that. Okay, listen, I got a question. <laughs> I saw, and I actually saved it and meant to send it to you. This is hilarious, by the way. Oh, I, saw, I saw a TikTok randomly, dude. <laughs> okay. Wait, can we, th- we, hold on, sorry. Pause. Can we talk about TikTok for a second? <laughs> sure. Yeah. You, you guys, love it? You, you guys have like personal TikToks? I do, I but, do, I, but don't, I don't post don't anything. It, no, no, I don't post anything. Come yeah. on. Like, yeah, I hear out there doing dances. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. We're not doing no dances. I'm not doing any dances to like Olivia Rodrigo songs, <laughs> yeah, but... Yeah. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> just yeah. I love it's good it. Stuff. It's addicting. I'll sit there for an hour and a half before it's bed and just watch bro. TikToks. It's addicting, Dude, bro. I, I, can, I can scroll through forever. What, like, we got to tag TikTok in here. You have to be able to send TikToks, like, make a group of people to send TikToks. Yeah, because oh, I'm sending them oh, like one, by one. Chat. I'm sending them one by one. Right you send them one by one, selecting multiple people and just, like, a group chat. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, every other, you can have an Instagram chat. Group oh, they don't chat. have yeah, that? Yeah. I don't think so. Right now, I'm sending them sending them one by one. Right? Straight up. Sending them one by one. I don't know shit. But no. yeah, okay. Continue. Okay, sorry. No, it was, it was a funny one. And I, I meant to send TikTok. it to you. It was good. It was uh, somebody somebody in the supporter section. So oh, behind yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. You know and the it? guy goes, and it's like pretty pretty quiet. I don't know if the ball's in the, the other end, whatever. And the guy goes, and the guy goes, Bono, <laughs> right hand for ass, left hand for tits. And I was like, there's no way. There's no way he oh. answers this. And you did. You gave him, I don't remember what it was. I've right obviously hand or left seen hand. this. Okay, yeah. I, there's a story behind this. And bro, this is why I was, you love TikTok. I'd like, to, I I'd like to put it out in the public. Okay, I was let's fucking hear it. crying. I'd like bro. to address this to the public. Okay. Please do. I was crying. I thought it was the funniest thing. Whenever you're behind the goal and you go back to get some water, there's a bunch of people that are just kind of yelling and they're screaming. They're trying to get your attention. Right, they're yeah, trying yeah. to get your attention. I didn't hear this guy's question. And I'm waving to some young kid. Because I would have gone the other way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm watching this video no. and it's like, uh, right hand ass, yeah, left yeah, hand tits. Yeah. And I wave at this young kid on my right hand, like from behind me. Yeah. And I, I saw like, it and shit. I was like, shit, no. I would have gone left hand. <laughs> Yo, dude, Come on, and I don't dude. even know how it came up on like I, I didn't follow the guy. I don't know. Yeah. The algorithm showed it to me, and I thought it was the funniest fucking. But thing. I like you, you fuck around with the the like you interact with the fans. And I shit. do. I like to. Yeah. I, yeah. During the game, I try and not the most I'll do is a little wave or yeah. whatever, yeah. like in between plays or at halftime yeah. or before the game. <laughs> People ask me questions not quite like that all the time, and I'm like, okay, yeah. like we'll talk after, you know? Yeah. Like I, I need, I'm playing a game here. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, the the one time I was like, dude, yeah, they got I you. wish you would have been closer because yeah. I would have done it. I would have gone left hand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it was amazing. I thought it was so funny. It was and incredible. I, I think yeah, I don't know if the play was at the end of the pitch or whatever, but yeah, it was, dude, it was so funny. Yo, Bonds, so we're about funny. to fly through some questions right now. Yeah, yeah. You ready for that? Hit him with Rich's question first. Oh shit. Start it oh, off with you want to start with Rich? Get him with Rich. First one. So uh, <laughs> Rich just wants to know what question. It's very simple. All right. yeah. Okay. I think it's very straightforward. Okay. <laughs> How come Richie scores so much against you in training? That's what he. That's what Richie wants to know about Richie. <laughs> Motherfucker, eh? Listen, I don't know how you're gonna answer that, but <laughs> Richie's Richie's a softy on the inside. You know that, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he plays so, tough. He right, plays right, tough, right. and he's always trying to fight people. I yeah. Know. And you're like, Richie, come on. You're not that guy. You're not that guy, pal. You're not that, that guy. guy you're not that guy. <laughs> Think dog, and so, and so, sometimes you just gotta kind of let Richie shoot. Yeah. And just kind of be like, oh, nice shot, Rich. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Help him with his confidence. You know, he's yeah. a big player for us. Yeah. yeah, you know it doesn't hurt my confidence when Richie scores on me, but when Richie scores, it helps him. Yeah, and that's also that's also false. Sometimes, 
Sometimes like um, has, he, has he scored a few bangers though? He scored a few bangers, of course. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sometimes like I'll really turn it on. I'm feeling it one day, you know, mm. and and I'll tell him like I'm I'm always talking shit in, yeah. in, in uh, like in training, training yeah. and finishing <laughs> drills and stuff. Like you're not fucking scoring on me today. <laughs> you're not scoring me yeah, today. Get him mad, right? Yeah. Get him fired up yeah. because it'll bring up it'll bring a bit That's of fire out of him too, right? Right? Yeah. Anyone, right? It'll yeah. bring yeah. a bit of fire out of you. Yeah. And it also makes it a bit more fun. And then he scores on you and he gets in your face and you're like, all right, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, get messages that. like this. Yeah, I then deserve see, that. See? But, 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 that, but that's your vet mentality too. Of knowing course. that, getting him fired up, get his confidence going. Oh, bro, the amount, of, yeah. the amount of young kids, we did fish and drills, obviously at the end, at the end of training after, yeah. you know, the young kids stay out and I'm in these kids' head. And yeah. they're, they're walking inside and like, fuck bones, fuck this. <laughs> I'm like, bro, get tough, yeah, man. Yeah, Score yeah, and yell something yeah, at yeah. me. Like, hey, yeah. let's have a little bit of fun here. Yeah. It's no fun <laughs> if I just stand there silent and just try and save the balls that you're kicking at me. Like, yeah. let's have a little bit of banner back and forth. And it's not personal. It's never of personal, course, right? Of course. You're just trying to bring the best out of them. Well, and, it's like and, a test too. Even, even right. if like you're hearing that from your own teammate, you're kind of ready for if another another team says it to right. you. You know, you're not gonna keep it fun. Let's, let's go. Keep let's it fun. keep it fun. And yeah. you walk in, you give each other a high five. You're like, come on, man. Yeah, relax. Take so a rich. That's why, bro. Yeah, Rich, right. Angie, you relax, do not. Bro. You don't score on <laughs> me that much. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know that. Um, from Serena Mohammed. Thank you, Serena. Hi, Serena. Favorite player, past or present? Uh, Gigi Buffon mm. was a guy who was like. The legend. That's G -G. my guy, man. Like legend, I don't, bro. you know, not my guy, but loyalty, yeah, that's my though. guy. Loyalty too. Talk about loyalty. Yeah. Um, but I always looked up to him when I was developing as a goalkeeper yeah. and like back in, you know, oh six and stuff like that. He's yeah. legend. He's it, right? So yeah. mm -hmm. um You could tell was, you got that you got that that kind of verbal aspect to you, like he goes yeah. nuts and with his fucking yeah. yelling and hands and shit. He obviously he's one of the best to ever do bro. it. So mm -hmm. look up still to that playing, guy. Bro. It's yeah, crazy. No, it's crazy. Say a B, my guy. Bro, he, he's playing against people's kids that he was teammates yeah, with. Yeah, and yeah, like yeah. All that, oh, like, yeah. It's bro, insanity. He's dumbing them. Oh, my God. <laughs> what is he, 42 now? Maybe older than that. Yo, we got one from Where's Bones. Oh, boy. He Let's said, go. who's his favorite brother? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I've, only got, uh, I've only got one. <laughs> so my options are kind of limited got, here. Yeah, you know what I mean? Um, Family, okay. bro. <laughs> we got, we got em a Emma Elizabeth. What's your favorite part about living in Toronto? Besides mm. knowing Ernesto. <laughs> she actually put that. No way she put that. No, no chance she put, she put that. that. Impossible. No chance she put that. My favorite part about living in Toronto is the, the community, like the, the people here. Yeah. Um, the fans of, of, of the teams here. Yeah. It's very passionate. It can be tough at times. But at the other day, it's all love, you know, yeah, but and, bro, and even it, seen it goes the, into the, the community. The fans like grow from when oh, you yeah. first came here to now. Right. And it's every year you come back and, and no matter how bad we were this season, our first home game next year, there's going to be thousands Ram. of people. It'll be packed. Yeah, packed. Right. Full and, and just, uh, I don't get noticed a lot, which, which I appreciate just because I want people to treat me like an ordinary person. Regular you know, like, guy, bro. Yeah, I, yeah. I treat everyone with respect in the same and, and and all i want is for people that i don't care yeah if i'm a goalkeeper for toronto fc or uh the president yeah or some guy you know just guy chill, that works yeah. at tim hortons or whatever like yeah. yeah yeah everyone should be treated the same and you know no special treatment stuff yeah. like that and and people people here have a way of just being kind always true people that don't know who you are people that don't care who you are. Yeah. And if you treat everyone the same way, everyone I come across is, is amazing. So for me, the community aspect of Toronto is, is really special. And it's it's much smaller than, it feels much smaller than the city really is. Yeah, yeah, which, is, like which is also so special. Yeah, 100%, about I agree 100%. with that. We got one from our guy, Bello Brini, bro. Oh, it's my guy. <laughs> Bello Brini. My guy. How oh, serious is the rivalry with CF Toronto, uh, Montreal? Oh, massive. Yeah. yeah. Is it um, legit? Is it really like? Yeah, it's massive. Yeah. And like, bro, so we just had the Canadian Cup final there. Yeah. And uh, I was on the bench for it. And I'm watching. And Richie and Oso, and they got some Canadian Nash team guys on, on that team. I mean, they're talking shit like angry. Like about to come to blows, you know? Jeez. Come on. And you're like, and it's it, it's in the heat of the moment, right? Just as you'd be with anyone else. But like, that's your that's your countryman. You know, like that's yeah. your boy yeah, when like, you're Dude, you were with him last that. week. Yeah, right, yeah. right. And it just goes to show how serious it is. Like, damn. When you come from another team to Toronto or to Montreal. The one thing you know is that when you show up on, on Derby day, it's, it's serious. And That's like, crazy. You, you hate that guy just yeah. because he, he plays in the city. And part of the reason is that it means so much to both fan groups. Yes. Right. And that's like, if I don't like, I don't, I don't, 
I don't hate Kamal Miller. I like Kamal Miller. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I, I don't. I don't hate that guy. Yeah. But when he comes into the box, if it's, it's a cross. Yeah. It's a wrap. He's got to come out with bows. Yeah. Know? I just talked to Kamal yesterday. <laughs> I know. I told him to clean his car. <laughs> <laughs> but when yeah. it, you know, you have to take it seriously because people get hyped up off of that, and and that's yeah. just kind of, and you feel that. Yeah. Right. You feel, feel that, that intensity and, and that energy as you're coming into the game. You're like, holy shit! This it, it just means. One of those things just means more. Like, oh, it means more. That is like the prime example. Of but like it means hostile, more. bro. Hostile. And think about think like actually, fans being hostile. You know oh, what I mean? Yeah, man. Oh, Jeez. for sure. Yeah, I mean? For sure. And the nice part about having a rivalry rivalry with a team that's in a different speaking part of the country mm, is that I don't know half the shit they're, they're, they're saying, saying to me. <laughs> yeah. I don't they speak they French. They probably like that too. <laughs> right. And it's great. Yeah. You can say whatever you want to me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not going to know what you're yeah, saying. I don't know what the hell you're saying. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> I have no clue. But the one thing about Montreal is it's the one place in the league where you go to and you actually feel like you're in a different country. Like you feel like... Yeah, you feel like in Europe somewhere. Yeah. In Europe. yeah. We were yeah. talking about that this morning. Yeah. yeah. The Montreal. stadium and the language and, and even the city, it just feels a bit more... I think more. they got a big stadium there too, it's right? It's like 19... It's it's tight. It's like 19,000. Oh, yeah? But it's like... I thought is Saputo Stadium? Yeah, yeah. 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 I it's, thought, it's like 19,000. Why, 19, why do you think 19, it was 20, bigger? 000, Interesting. And it's like okay. tight. Okay. Right in the lines. The yeah, fans yeah. are on top of you, and it really just feels like you're in, you're in a different country. It's pretty cool. That's awesome. I mean, as a footy player, you rather a rivalry than none, you know? Yeah, of course. We got one from Sam's Army. I think you know him. I know Sam. You know Sammy, eh? Yeah, yeah. He said, if you could save a pen versus anyone in the world, who would it be? Wow. And why is it Samuel Army? <laughs> 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 I, I don't know this guy. Bro, but he's I love funny. Him so it's he does. Amazing. He does. Uh, he's part of the Barstool Network. Oh, amazing! Oh, and he does. A, he okay. does a soccer podcast. In, cool. You know, for for, cool. for Barcelona. Cool, cool, we gotta, cool. We gotta link um, up with him then. Yeah. I've done a. I've done a couple guest appearances there, and it's always a good time. Good banter. Just that question. I'm dying. And uh, <laughs> that's a, that's I've a good told one. Sam before. I said, "Listen, when I'm in your city, I'll show up to the park with my jeans on." <laughs> right, fresh out of bed, and you're not scoring a penalty on me. I, I told my jeans on, fresh out of bed. Right, my bed. like with, with my with my jeans and my dress, like whatever shoes I'm wearing. Yeah, yeah. no gloves. I don't care. I'm saving your penalty. Let's go. Um, <sighs> that's a tough one. Yeah. So I faced some some pretty good penalties. I, was, I told you guys I scored against Kaka. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I saved the Schweinsteiger penalty a few years yes, ago, which was crazy. which was sick. Chicago um, Fire. Yeah. yeah, I was I was fired up. Yeah, of course. Um, right now. I think it has. To, I think it has to be Ronaldo. Like, yeah, you wouldn't save it though, bro. Come on, bro. <laughs> don't get this <laughs> chance. No, come Portuguese on. No, no, of course. Come on, you'd be able to do it, bro. No, no, that, that's a good one. That's a it's good one. Like Straight he's up. he's like. A, if you have a, a picture, like blank faces, right? Close your eyes. Blank faces. Okay. Right, World Cup final. Mm. You don't know what color the jerseys are, mm. and there's like ninety thousand people mm -hmm. cheering, yelling. And someone steps up to take a PK. Yeah. Mm. Who are you envisioning taking this PK? It's Ronaldo. Yeah, Ronaldo. It's fucking Ronaldo. He's at yeah. least he's yeah. top five yeah. Yeah. in anyone's head that's yeah. that's envisioning that, right? Top one. Look, for Ernesto, he's <laughs> top one. <laughs> for me, he's top one. Yo, how about PKs though? You 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 uh like what are your thoughts on PKs? Like, are you are you ready for it? Any moment? I like them because yeah. It's the one time that like all eyes are just the, like well the pressure is actually not on the keeper right yeah. like yeah. any other situation when someone's coming down to score pressure's on the keeper yeah it's you true. let it in oh true your pressure's, shit okay if you save it you're great yeah and that's just the way it is yeah but it's the one time in the game where if you don't save it you're not expected to yeah, yeah. So you, like I've always just approached them loosely yeah. I don't know if this is good advice because I don't know if I've won a penalty shootout in a while but <laughs> <laughs> come when, on when you got shooting there, you right, shooting like, okay. you fuck one off okay I have a better record in one offs than I do in there in, you go but anyways it's the one moment where someone steps up and they walk from midfield and pick up a ball and they look at you <laughs> and you look at them and I'll just like smile like, yeah, yeah, yeah I was gonna say do you do anything the pressure's on you yeah, bro yeah, yeah. It's true, it's if, true if I save this this play's gonna go it's wild bonus, yeah. Yeah. yeah if I score Okay, fine. But then my teammates coming up to take the kick, you know? Like, yeah. It's the only time that the pressure shifts from you to them. The, the real pressure shifts from. Yeah, that's true. From the goalkeeper saving the ball. Damn, I didn't really look at it that way. Like, it, strikers will tell you, you know, yeah, strikers, there's pressure every yeah, time. Of course. Yeah, but you might get five, six chances a game. Yeah, yeah you have a couple chances. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, in the run of play, if someone has a clear cut chance on you and they score, that might be the only chance you have to save, to save a ball all game. True. true. You know what and I mean? So the stakes deciding. are a bit higher each time. Right, a goalkeeper comes into play. Yeah, for him, True. stakes are a bit higher. Uh, and it's the one time where a guy misses the goal on a penalty kick, or the keeper saves on a penalty kick. 
That's on you, bro. Mm, that's true. That's, that's on true. you. That's not it's on me. That's true. true. I got no pressure here. If you guys smile. score all five, <laughs> yeah. statistically, you're supposed to, you're more likely to score all five than I am to save more than one. one yeah, right? Yeah. Like I think that. Yeah. I'm geez, curious. Bro. Are you said so Ronaldo? I want to quickly talk to, talk about Ronaldo. You think you think he's going to come to MLS at some point? Because that, that, that seems to be the big question. Dude, in if he football. came right now, he would dummy shit. So this bro. is the this is the problem. Uh, generally, with MLS, is that these guys Ronaldo until he's forty can make $10 million a year because he's Ronaldo. Yeah. You can't pay a guy who's 40, $10 million a year to play half your games here. Yeah. It just doesn't work. Yeah. You know what I mean? So until these guys are either okay with taking pay cuts and coming and making a few million or 10 million max yeah. 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 at a good age where they can contribute, mm -hmm. then I don't think it's going to work or else it's yeah. just a publicity stunt, right? It's a well, marketing tool. That's what I was going to say. And that's it, right? Yeah. And, and maybe, I don't know, maybe LA Galaxy comes and says, hey, Ronaldo, here's... Uh, four million, and then of course we're you're gonna have sponsors yeah, and this and that. You're gonna get the you're gonna get the fifteen, right? Yeah. yeah. But until that happens, like it's not really logical for the biggest name players who can still play mm -hmm. game after game after game and produce game after game after game to come to MLS because they can just make so much more money elsewhere. Yeah, just stay. You know what I mean? For whatever. Yeah. yeah. So I think maybe one day he might, for a year or two, just to kind yeah. of cash out. But so what I noticed too is like a lot, a lot of like not like superstar players like fucking Pirlo and shit, but a lot of players that are in their prime now in Europe and South America, they're coming, they're coming to MLS more. Yeah. Like in in an age that's 26, 27, 28. It's which more is likely now than ever. Like yeah. when we got Giovinco, he was in his prime, in his prime yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and so, but situations, you know, deals like that aren't aren't that common from from yeah. Europe, South America for sure. It's now almost like a hopping bed from. South American teams, guys that are almost there, come to MLS for yeah. a couple of years, and to if they produce well, they to springboard Europe. to Europe. Cool. Yeah. If they're not directly going from South America to Europe, you know what I mean. So, yeah. you'd see that more often. Um, but the European deals still exist, and I think they'll be as the money gets better here, and teams yeah. are willing to spend more. I think it'll get better. Yeah, and teams grow, clubs yeah. grow. Yeah, and they are. Yeah. They're expanding. MLS is expanding. It's growing. Yeah. Dude, listen. Ask him the question. Oh boy. Asking it's, the question. It's time for the famous question. Okay. All right. I'm sure you know what it is, but I got to just say it because we got to get the content. It's for you guys. <laughs> We're the MBH podcast. Yep. Money buys happiness. Yep. What do you think of the term? What are your thoughts? Uh, I, you know what? I actually thought about this a lot before I came here with you guys. As soon as I, as soon as I agreed to, to come here and hang out with you guys, I was like, you know what? I'm going to think about this. I'm going to ask it. Yeah. And I think to, to an extent, it, it plays into that. Um, I think that you can be dirt poor and be super happy. Yeah. I think that you can be super rich and be miserable. Yeah. But I think what you do with your money is what contributes to that, right? If you're blowing it on stuff that doesn't matter just to try and fill a void or to do this or do that, like some people might be, if, if I had a hundred million dollars and I donated 10 million of it to a charity that I was really close to me or something, yeah. that would make me really happy and that would be fulfilling. Like that will add to happiness. If you take 10 million and, and blow it at EFS with Ernesto <laughs> over a five year period, that's not true. Contract. Like that's short term <laughs> happiness, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah. That's awesome in the moment. Yeah. And then you wake up the next day and look at your credit card statement, you're like, holy shit, why did I do that? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we've um, all had those nights. So I, I do, I do think that it can. Yeah. I, and uh, it for me, it depends on what you do with it. Yeah. And I think that True. money buying happiness that that's kind of what it's all about, right? Yeah. With your money, you can you can buy quote you know um, you can buy your happiness, yeah. but it won't buy you happiness. Yeah, you mm. know what I mean. Like yeah. you having money yeah, yeah. won't won't bring you joy. Of course, yes. what you do with it and the way you spend it, if you spend it the right way. It can it can bring you joy. Yeah. So for me, you know, I was up until like midnight last night thinking about that. <laughs> what am I gonna say? So that's, <laughs> you guys are gonna fucking. That's ask what me. I came up with. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. what I came up with. It's no, not no. the end all be all. Yeah. Uh, it helps to have it. Of course. Of course. It's the one thing that you never stop spending and you always want more of. So I have one more question actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fuck. I just want to know, like, I got when you day. think about when you think <laughs> about life after footy. Yeah. I know it's oh, a while from I now. I was thinking about this and I, it yeah. came to my mind. Yeah, yeah. Like, what are you thinking? And I don't want to age you no, right no, now. No. You know what I mean, bro? But like it's, I, it's something that I think is important, it? of yeah. course. Yeah. It's something that I I hope it doesn't come for a while. Of course. Yeah. You know, and, and, and everyone will say the same thing. But the realistic possibility is it can come at any moment. Yeah. God mm -hmm. forbid. Knock on wood. Injuries, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Can't hack it. 
just not up to the level anymore. Yeah. Uh, or you get sick of it. Like it happens. It happens all the time, every yeah. day. Yeah. Um, I went to to school in Syracuse and I did broadcast journalism because Syracuse has an incredible broadcast journalism school, and I was fortunate enough to be able to study there. And I always wanted to see how far the game could take me. And if that was to the end of college, at least I'd know I'd have a kick-ass degree. Yeah. That's going to set me up for success in the broadcast industry. I mean, I, listen, I was that kid that like I'd be playing FIFA or NHL on my PlayStation. I would turn the volume down and commentate yeah, it myself. You, you know, like, that's, that. just, the kind, yeah, that's yeah, just what yeah, I did. Yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. I love to do. Yeah. yeah. And Syracuse is like a top five program year in, year out in terms wow. of broadcasting. So I was like, wow, like this is the perfect storm, right? Yeah. We're talking yeah. about when we, were, when we were picking colleges. Yeah. And so I often think of what I want to do after. Mm. I don't want to get you know too many ideas out there <laughs> because I got some good ones up here that I'm just <laughs> okay, saving, okay. you know, yeah, hopefully yeah, like yeah. 10 years from now. Um, but I think like I always wanted to like host Sports Center. Yeah, you know, I, was, cool. I was just about to say we're going to see you on Sports Center. Yeah, right? and yeah, that would yeah. be amazing. I know that Josie got an opportunity to host a, a Sports Center uh, last year, or a couple of years ago. Um, I would love to do something like that. Yeah. Um, I don't really want to do like in person commentating, like okay. hosting Sports Center. Being in in the studio and not doing like that kind of game, stuff, like no. not like not you're like saying you want to be at the table with the right. two guys and you yeah. guys are talking about how the game. Like the I would love <laughs> like my dream growing up. I wanted to have a show like Stephen A. or yeah, yeah, you know, like your first take Unreal. or whatever. Yeah. Where you set your own agenda. Yeah, you have your guests that come in, or you have yeah. a guy that you you know go yeah. back and forth you banter with, with yeah. right? And that's and that's a show. Yeah. Um, I think you could smash that, bro. Yeah, I think you could too. I, like I would really enjoy doing that. And yeah. the thing is, obviously, you can't just. Yeah. finish playing and be like hey i'm ready to yeah, yeah. to accept my show now <laughs> yeah. you know like <laughs> yeah. you guys, you guys, i'm ready now <laughs> yeah so yeah. i know that no one's been waiting for me to finish playing <laughs> i know you haven't been saving the show for me yeah. but i'll take it yeah let me know. you have to you have to start somewhere yep. and work your way to, to where you want to so be so you're still doing that degree is that what yeah. you said it's a work in progress nice. the problem is i have to do it on campus so i have to kind of wait until i'm done playing to do my major stuff but all my other minor requirements like and, and shit? yeah that's arts cool. and science and stuff and whatever yo that's impressive that you're still that doing out. some shit though on the side man i mean it took me five years to get back going again yeah six but now you know i don't yeah. feel like i'm close to the end by any yeah. means but no nah, no nah, it's never bad it's never bad to just have it and it keeps you keeps you fresh like i enjoyed taking a class you know yeah just to like i i, I love writing papers like about things that i enjoy have interest yeah, in. yeah of course and so i took a sociology of sport class where i was like oh i have to write a paper on uh you know why mls uh how mls can grow or like this and that about yeah. the mlb lockouts or nba like okay done you're that's right still, in it yeah exactly that's cool. hour hour i've written five pages and i'm like yeah, wow yeah. that was the easiest thing i've ever so you're done just a fucking sports fanatic that's what it is yeah for yeah. me it's a general sports <clears throat> thing like football basketball so soccer you're like a bills I, fan? I love it i am a bills fan. yeah of course Bills mafia baby <laughs> hey, okay it's my squad All right <laughs> I'm ready to, you guys ain't got any foldable tables here? I'll jump through. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, <laughs> we're smashing through that desk behind you. Fuck it's it. off seems for me. I can jump through tables, right? <laughs> oh man! So you, you're gonna get the preseason soon, aren't you? Well, I mean, this is gonna be out by then. This will be out way before. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. Next middle middle of next January. Beauty. Cool. Yeah. So enjoying the off season. Yeah. A couple trips. Nice. Uh, time with the family. Adam there boy. you go. Time with the brother. Time with the brother. <laughs> Recharge. Reset. Of course. Yeah. Yeah amazing man and get back going again dude man that's the way it goes but yo we appreciate you coming yes thank you for because, having man, yes. I, i've been wanting to hear your story for a, for a while too um and you know what a lot of people look up to you in the city a lot of people that are going to watch this look up to you so last last question do you have any advice um for any young young athletes or even young young football players yeah definitely um enjoy like have fun while you're doing it I feel like so many people get so caught up in where they want the path to end or where they want to be yeah. that they're not present in the moment and they kind of lose sight of the friends or the experiences they have along the way. Like, don't be afraid to try other sports or, uh, you know, have fun with your friends and enjoy being out there on the field because those things don't last forever, you know? Yeah. And um, when you get to the point where you have lock, you know, and you're in the locker room and stuff, like those experiences are ones that, you never forget. So yeah. on top of showing up every day, working hard as the baseline, you have to enjoy what you're doing. Yeah. If you're miserable or your mom's making you go to soccer practice <laughs> and you don't really want to be there, yeah. like you're going to hate it. Yeah. And you're not going to get the full benefit of, of what you can be as a player. So for me, like you have to love what you do. Yeah. If you don't, 
try something else, you know, and you'll find something you love and something that you excel at. And, and that'll be your path. Your path can change, but don't get stuck on where you want to be. Stay in the moment, stay present and enjoy where you are. Right on. It's true. Yeah. That's it. Well, I'm going to get bro. that fucking tied in on my back. Jesus I'm ready Christ, for a TED talk. You guys are going to get a show, dude. Yeah, you you show. Get a show. We're going to get you a show. We're going to get you a show. We're going to get you a show. We're going to start a sports show. I'm in. Show for him. I'm yeah. in. Let's you do it. Down? I'm in. All right. Sports podcast. So just will you run it. I'm in. All right. Done. All right, Buns. All right, you heard it. You heard it here first. <laughs> uh, Listen, bro. Good yeah, luck. Good luck to the, Good luck next season. Thank you. Yes. Um, keep rocking and rolling. Thank you. You're a guy here in the city, bro. I love you guys. Don't man. go you anywhere. Guys all right. Dude. I love got you mad guys. love for you, man. We, we, we got we to make our way out of some games next yeah, season. Yeah, we do. Eh? We do. We do. Come on, bro. Listen, if you're if you want to come out to a game, I know a guy who can get tickets. <laughs> do you know Do you know somebody? I got a couple. I got a couple connections that. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> I might be able to. Somebody. Yo, sometimes I just walk up to Will Call and I'm just like Alex Bono. <laughs> <laughs> Alex I know Bono. that's not true. <laughs> I know that's not true <laughs> because his brother. all it takes is that one text before. Hey, you got two for me? Yes, yeah, I know. I come have on, two for bro. you. No, we got to We got to make it out. No, we we'll, we'll 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 of course. But dude, appreciate you coming out. Yeah, Honestly, it's been a pleasure. Uh, well, this will be out in like a week or two. So, yeah. and enjoy right your off season. Bro. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, man. Enjoy Mexico. I will. <laughs> yeah. Don't bait him out. <laughs> <laughs> no, come on. Don't follow me there. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna chase you there. No, <laughs> honestly, dude, appreciate you. It was uh, been a pleasure and. Uh, Maybe we'll get you on mid-season, talk some more shit. I'm ready. We'll All do right? it on the field. I'm always here. Yeah, on the, yeah, <laughs> we, we, we could do like a we could do like a remote location podcast. Yeah, taping. Yeah. I'm in. We could do Let it in outdoor, like a like oh, a we'll summer outdoor in Toronto. <laughs> I know where you're. I know where you're trying to get key here. No, no, no. <laughs> what are you trying Vanessa, to key? don't to take us here. to Cabana. I told you that. <laughs> <laughs> We're not doing a podcast at Cabana. <laughs> bro, get us on a boat. <laughs> get us on a fucking boat. Get us rooftop. Boat would be a boat would be a fire podcast. No, we'll, we'll get it. But man, yeah, seriously, yeah. appreciate you. Uh, we won't take any more of your time, Dean. Done.